Hello, good evening all. So uh, today we'll do week three and week four revision. Good evening. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, yes. So, uh, ma'am, will we be discussing mock quiz? Ah, uh, we'll be discussing tomorrow? mock quiz tomorrow. So the TA session that you have tomorrow at seven. So uh, there we'll discuss mock uh, questions. Okay, uh, ma'am, because uh, tomorrow I guess there is no class scheduled. Uh, no, no, I'm saying the TA session that you have for tomorrow, right? Friday, every Friday you have 7 to 9 TA session. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine. so there uh, you, uh, the mock solution will get discussed. So we'll mention it there also. So. Okay. Tomorrow you are taking, madam? Uh, no, I am not taking. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Ma'am, are we getting the formula sheet? Oh, no formula sheet. Like, why? Which formula sheet? Um, generally for maths, uh, these parts like we don't the stat, provide. Them. Stat, no math, you not, we don't give it, but stat, not. Yeah, but stats, you don't have it, right? This yeah, is quiz one. Stat, yeah. Okay. yeah, this is quiz one. Okay. All right. Ma'am, are you going to provide PDF for the solution? Or uh, which solution? Uh, mock test solution. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it will be provided by tomorrow morning, and uh, the mock will also get discussed uh, tomorrow evening in the session. Okay, ma'am. Tomorrow uh, morning. Yeah. Week wise weightage for quiz one. Oh, weightage for quiz one. Uh -huh. Week wise. Oh, week wise weightage. Oh, so whatever you saw in uh, the mock, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, the weightage would be more or like same only. Okay. Yeah. Maybe slightly different, but almost same. Means uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so in week uh, three, four, we have these topics, uh, these major topics. So first, you have the four fundamental subspaces. Uh, you have orthogonal vectors and subspaces, projections, least squares, uh, least squares and projections onto a subspace. You have regression. You have eigenvalue eigenvectors, and you have diagonalization. Uh, so let's start with uh, the four fundamental subspaces. Uh, so, uh, uh, like you know that for any M cross N matrix, uh, these these are the four fundamental subspaces that we have. So the first is the column space of A, right? And uh, what is column space of A? Column space of A is nothing but span of all the columns of A. Span of all the columns of it. Then you have uh, row space, and row space is nothing but uh, column space of A transpose. Then you also have null space. So, null space of A gives you the set of all the values of x such that your ax equal to 0. And then you have left null space, which is null space of A transpose. And this is same as all the value of x such that A transpose of x equal to 0. Right? And uh, this matrix, so if A is a matrix M cross N, so you know the transformation, how does it go like? So the transformation is from Rn to Rm. Right. So, uh, the column space of A will be a subspace of Rm. And similarly, uh, the left null space will be a subspace of Rm. So, all this, uh, you would have seen it, right? Uh, so, column space of A is subspace of Rm. Your row space will be a subspace of Rm because now you are talking about A transpose. Uh, null space you're talking about set of all x for which your uh, 
uh, when you uh, such that a is equal to zero, so and your x is in n, so uh, R n, so it is it belongs to R n, and similarly left null space with the subspace of R m. So these are the four fundamental subspaces, and be very clear uh, with the definitions uh, what it means, and you should know how to solve this, uh, how to find these uh, subspaces when given any matrix. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then the big picture that we had is like you have the null space. Like, how is the null space perpendicular to column space, uh, column space of A transpose, and how is the column space perpendicular to the left, uh, left null space? Right? We had seen it earlier that uh, these four. How how are these four fundamental subspaces related to each other? So we saw that column space of A is perpendicular to Null space of A transpose, right? And we saw that row space of A is perpendicular to null space of A, right? And how? And we had also seen that how this column space of A and uh, this null space of A transpose makes the whole n, right? So this is what is given here. Like column space of A, uh, along with this left null subspace. It makes the whole of R M, the whole space R M, and this uh, column space and this uh, column space of A transpose or row space of A, uh, along with the null space of A, gives you the whole of R N. So this is what uh, the big picture here is. Like you, you are just given a matrix, and with that matrix, you are able to construct the whole space R N and R M. So that is why these four uh, subspaces are quite useful to study. Then. Uh, the next is when do you call two vectors or two subspaces to be uh, sorry two vectors to be orthogonal? So let's say I have uh, vectors x and y, right? So we will say x is perpendicular to y if x dot y equal to zero, and x dot y is what? This is the dot product, and how do you define the dot product? It is just x transpose y equal. Zero, or you can also say that your y transpose x equal to zero. It's the same thing, just a dot product. So if uh, let's say if your x is x one, x two, up to x n, and your y is y one, y two, plus say y n. Okay. So if you have to find the dot product of x and y, what this will be? What is x dot y? This is just y one plus x two y two x n y n x x n y n right? <laughs> so you just nothing but uh, x transpose y. Ah, uh -huh, this is x transpose y. Right? Okay. So next we had uh, projections. So uh, in projection, so uh, okay. So we saw that like. Many a times, uh, your interest is what you always want to solve this. You mean you want to solve this equation a x equal to the system of equation a x equal b, but it is not possible that every time your p, uh, your b, uh, okay. So when do you call uh, this solution exist? When b belongs to the column space of a, right? So, but many a times it is not possible that your b is in column space of a. Then what do you do? To find the solution, you project it. You project it on this column space of A, right? Uh, so when you project it on column space of A, then then we work with that P uh, that you find. So before that, we had all also seen that uh, like before going to the column space of A, what happens when you have uh, like see this picture over here. So we had. A vector b, and we want to project this vector b onto. Um, okay. Uh, yes, Sabha, I will. I will, will share, upload this PDF. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, just uh, look at this picture. So what we want is we want to project. 
this b vector onto this a onto this line which is given by this vector a right so we have uh, drawn perpendicular on this line and we are saying this is rp now we need to know what is this p okay so how do we proceed for that uh we want to uh, see so this e e is e, e is this error term which is b minus p right and uh, you can you also know that that this e should be perpendicular to a right and if e e should be perpendicular to a it means that the dot product should be zero it means that uh, i can say that that a transpose e should be zero right and what is e e yeah. is just b minus p right and what is p p is just some uh, some multiple of uh, a this vector a right so i can write it as some x hat a where x hat is just a constant this is zero then you have a transpose b to be equal to a transpose x hat of a right and from there now to find p your goal is to find p right so to find p you need this this is just x hat a so you need to find what is this x hat right so this x hat is what this is just a transpose b by a transpose a right so p should be your a transpose b by a transpose a times a right now uh, you, you you see that this is not uh, the projection but what is a projection matrix that you had seen projection matrix that you had seen is a a transpose by a transpose a Right. Okay, but how do you get from here to here? So this we this this also we had seen earlier that uh, I mean, see a transpose b is just uh, dot product. Yeah, right. So you can move this over here, and you can write it as a transpose b and a transpose a. Now you can use the associativity property, and this can be easily written as a transpose by a transpose a of p. Right. So this matrix that you see here, this is just a projection matrix, right? So this is just p times b. Okay. So you got this p to be. p times b so this this was when you are projecting a vector onto a line but uh, in general we would be interested in projecting a vector onto the column space of a right so the process is again the same it just now you have uh, a now you are projecting b onto the column space of a so let's say this is uh, uh, let's say this is my column space of a there will different vectors you will have here there right and now you are projecting b onto this p uh, onto this column space of a right so again this e uh, and since uh, you 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 are you are not projecting it on a line but uh, you are projecting it on the column space of a which is span of all the columns of a and we saw that in short hand notation this can also be written as ax right you can write p is a p p as ax in the short hand notation and now use the same thing that we did for our uh, projection i mean project um, uh, when we are projecting a vector onto a line and uh, now Uh, you see that this e is perpendicular to now col column space of a right 
and when e is perpendicular to column space of a it means uh, and we know that this column space of a is perpendicular to null space mm -hmm. of a transpose it means your e should belong to null space of a transpose right now uh, when e belongs to the null space of a transpose it means what it means a transpose yeah. be equal to zero. e should be zero right and since you uh, since you are interested in finding again this p which is nothing but ax hat so you need to find this x hat right so how do you find it we will just substitute uh, e to b p b minus p so b is what b is your uh, okay yeah p is what p is ax hat this is equal to 0 and when you solve this you get x hat to be a transpose a converts a transpose b okay so p turns out to be your uh, what is p p is ax hat so it should be a a transpose a inverse a transpose b and what is a projection matrix in this case this we take it as a projection matrix p right so there are two properties that a projection matrix satisfies so one is uh, your p square is p which we also call as i important and it is also symmetric okay anu yeah uh, mama i want to know length of uh, e and length of p they are different or same they are different no I mean, how can they be same? Like, can you show on the picture, like, what is the length of P and what is the length of E? This is E. This is E. Right? This is the error vector. And, yeah. and this is my P. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ma'am, P is projection vector. Ma'am, okay. ma okay. here instead of B minus P, if we write like in terms of the projection matrix P B, and, e -B. Hmm. and if you take out B outside, can we write like the projection matrix P equal to I minus A transpose B like that way and calculate the projection matrix? Will it be right? Uh, no. Okay. Can you repeat? You are saying uh, we write. P uh -huh. to B, P uh -huh. times B. Yeah. This is, what, this is what we got, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we take out B from that ex expression, A transpose into B minus P B. Oh, okay. Can you repeat? We, we take out? And B outside. B outside. Okay. Uh -huh. And then? Uh, a transpose B, you have A transpose B outside and inside will be I minus B. Uh, no, I think I'm not uh, getting what you're saying. Oh, okay. okay you no, said... I, 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 I paused it in this course. And this. Okay. You can proceed. Okay. Mm. Yes, Amit. Um, hello, ma'am. Ma'am, I had a doubt related to this concept. Hmm. Can. Uh, yeah, tell me. Ma'am, if the projection of the vector A uh, length is 10 unit hmm. onto vector B of length 8 has hmm. a magnitude of 5 unit. Then length okay. of the projector. Ah, uh, this is uh, here, this is from pre some previous equation. Yeah, yeah. Right? Here magnitude unit. How to put here? Wait. Uh, what is your? Uh, can you tell? Repeat. 
if projection of hmm. vector a of hmm. length 10 unit onto vector b of length 8 unit has a magnitude of 5 unit then length of the projection of vector b onto a oh wait uh, can you put the question in the chat okay okay i'll try actually excuse me ma'am yeah ma'am i also have this same doubt which the, is uh, somebody hmm. asked just now right hmm. in that i am not getting like what they want to say the projection is where actually and which one is the projection vector and uh, which one is the vector so the language is a little bit confusing i also want you to please take this question in the class yeah okay sure so uh, we'll just finish the theory and then I have a set of questions also. So when we start the question, uh, we'll take it that time. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Please proceed. Okay. okay. All right. Um, okay. So next we have least square approximation. So um, this is. Uh, this is very similar to what we are looking at the projection, right? So when you don't have, when your system of a, uh, equation AX equal to B doesn't have a solution, then in that case, what do we do? So we want, uh, we project our vector B and uh, onto a line and then we solve for, uh, uh, then we solve for the system, right? So in that case, we always, the error that we get, we always want to bring down that error to towards a zero. We want that error to be as less as possible. It can never be zero, but we want it to be as less as possible, right? So when you uh, do the all the derivation, then again, you see that you get the same uh, solution that you got from projection, right? We have seen the proofs. So uh, I will not go it there again, but we get the solution to be same as A transpose A x hat to be a transpose b right and this is what we got from even projection so from there we get our x hat so x hat is the least square solution for which we want this this is nothing but the error term right error was what error was b minus p and b uh, what was p p was just a x hat so you want the length of this error vector which is norm square should be as less as possible okay Okay, before uh, going to this, let's take the question. Uh, yes, Amit. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, ma'am. Actually, uh, in the lecture for least, least square method, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we see like uh, when we have the x coordinates, uh, I mean the x, uh, we have some values like 1, 2, 3, 4. But when we, create, when we take the matrix, we also add 1, 1, 1, right, as a second column to do the mm -hmm. computation. Mm -hmm. In uh, similarly, in the mock question that we have, right, hmm. it's uh, actually opposite. Uh, like one, 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 and then we have that that x column. So hmm. why why there is a difference? And like uh, I'm not able to do that calculation. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, so in the mock, what you have is. Oh, saying that if you take one later and uh, in the second column, I'm taking one in the first column, you're getting different answer. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Right.
okay i'm not able to open my portal uh can you just show me the question there yeah can i share my screen um, no i think or... it's okay to put it in the chat or something okay okay Also, that question, what question? Can you put it in the chat? I didn't get it. Yeah, I'm doing it now. Okay. Question number sixteen. No. Question number nine. Question number nine. Okay. Ah, uh, excuse me. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, ma'am, can you say where is the question exactly? Um, no, it is question number nine mark. Okay. the question is not coming in a correct way when i put it in the chat i can tell no, you i i, I saw i saw the question yeah yeah okay i will okay in the, so in the lecture it says is, like yeah sorry. so your matrix is given to be uh, this 1 1 1 minus 1 1 2 right yes so 1 1 1 minus 1 1 2 okay uh, so we, we just saw this right we you had to find the uh you have to find the length of the projection vector right and uh, yes. what is it the length of the projection vector we need to uh, do that calculation at a into a hmm. transpose it is a a transpose a inverse a transpose b right so are you not getting the answer see the problem is right in in the lecture right once mm -hmm. we find that uh, line equation right they will they will put that uh, pro, uh, they will try to find the projection for point uh, like minus 1 1 and 2 because that minus 1 1 and 2 is in the first column in the lecture but here in this case minus 1 1 2 is in the second column so i was not sure like whether i have to find the projection for point 1 1 1 or i have to find the projection for point minus 1 1 and 1 2 Oh, okay. Um, but if the matrix is already given to you, um, 
I mean, we are definitely projecting this minus one, uh, one two. On this. And what is the B given? Uh, B was given to be. One one three. One one three. Ma'am, uh, I solved it uh, as a transpose a using the theta hat. Uh, same except a transpose a uh, theta hat is equal to a transpose b. And solving for theta one and theta theta dash and theta double dash for mm -hmm. x one and x two. The answer should come right. Ash. Yeah, and I got the answer. You got the answer right. It should come. For him. So See, after the same that, problem is uh, same problem only the columns are exchanged that is discussed in the lecture. So the same way as they take the matrix, you take the matrix and solve it. In fact, yes, uh, yes. the numbers are also same. The no, matrix. but my my question is when you are trying once you get that line right, mm -hmm. are you taking the projection on minus one one and two or or one one one? Because in the lecture it takes the projection on the first column, not on the second column. No, no. It takes on actually. Uh, you get the. Uh, have you got the theta dash and theta double dash? That is theta at. Yes, I did. I uh, I got that. See, I got it as nine by seven and four by seven, and they are taking for uh, first column. Uh, like you no, know, since it is x one and x two, you have to multiply uh, x one uh, to the first columns and x two to the second columns. So they are taking both. In the lecture, if you see. It will be for both the columns. You'll be uh, uh, taking the that is. I mean, you get x hat, which is x one and x two. That is nine by seven and four by seven. So finally, it will be uh, p one will be nine by seven into one plus four by seven into minus one. Then p two will be nine by seven into one, four by seven into one. Then nine by seven into one, four by seven into two, which is the. So that is how you should take. Okay, maybe then I would have done some mistake in the calculation. Yeah, and then that becomes a projection vector. You calculate the length. Okay. Thank you. I can give a try. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, Ma'am, can you explain it again? I didn't get it. I see few things in the chart. Can you uh, take this question, which I put? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this one is already some Sharat. Yeah. The projection question, right? The question was uh, projection of vector A of length 10 unit. So you have vector A, length is 10 unit, onto a vector B of length 8 unit. Say this is a B, this is 8 unit, has a magnitude of 5 unit. So this projection, this P has a length of 5 unit, okay? This is 5, this is 8. Maybe I should draw a better picture. 
Uh, ma'am, this is the actually this is the problem where I'm facing with mm -hmm. the language. Actually, earlier I also thought in the same manner what you have put. But mm -hmm. if I go with the old English grammar, then like it should be like we have to read it like this: the projection of a vector has a magnitude five units. Usually we read like this because it's a mm -hmm. if a projection of a vector a of length ten units means. Mm -hmm. It is not the length of the vector; it's a projection of a vector, right? Uh, projection. Uh, the question states: If projection of vector a, so you are projecting a, whose length is ten unit, onto some another vector whose length is eight unit. So this is my eight unit. So has you mean I should read like this? If projection has a magnitude of five units, you mean like this? It should be like this. Ah, uh, projection has a magnitude of five unit. But then it's incomplete, right? Oh, uh, I think the language is very confusing in this. Okay, me, yeah. No, it's I understand. Possible. What do you yeah. want to say? Yeah. But I'm saying the other way is also possible. Ah, uh, you are saying other way as in a uh, uh, projection. The length of projection is ten unit. Yeah. As in, okay. So this is how it should look like. But as uh, he said that the projection cannot be greater than, like Sayan said in the chat, it cannot be greater. Projection cannot be greater than what? Than the vector, right? We have learned in maths too. Projections cannot be greater than the its uh, its original length, right? Length of the vector. It cannot be greater than that. But in that case, the question is incorrect. Then. A uh, projection cannot be greater than the vector. Yeah. It is not greater, right? Uh, I mean, the vector is ten unit, and projection length is five unit. No, I'm asking mm -hmm. if we read it like this: if the projection of a vector has a mm -hmm. magnitude five units, and here we are saying that vector a of length ten units, right? Vector a is of ten. Mm hmm. Right. Vector a is of length ten unit, right? And if the projection is five units. Mm hmm. Okay, you have you are also saying the same. I mean, uh, vector A has ten unit, B has the length eight unit, and you are projecting this A, and this projection has the length five unit. So projection is anyway lesser than the vector. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the if the projection of a vector A of length ten units. Hmm. So this vector A is ten units, not the projection. You mean? <laughs> Yeah, no, the projection no. is five units. Yes, the projection, projection of vector is five, is five units. units. This yes, is correct. five unit. This yeah. is ten unit. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, can you solve it? Five, ten. Then it will be. Then it should be. Uh, then, then what you will say like uh, for projection of B on A will be. Projection of B on A will be. Yeah, because the projection matrix for both the vectors will be different, right? For A will be different, and for B will be different. Hmm. So if it falls on B, then we can consider like. Whatever is on, whatever falls on this, uh, we can do it half. But same is not applicable for A, right? Because for the projection A, like for vector A, the matrix will be different. So I can say that I can simply mm -hmm. double it. So if it is eight, if the length of vector B is eight, then the projection on A should be double. It should be sixteen then, right? Ah, uh, you're actually violating. But it's but it's violating the projection rule. Yeah, yeah, the projection I cannot I be. I understand it is it is violating. I understand. <laughs> but but the logic what we are using is, as per that I'm saying it should be mm. then eight, and then on A it should be sixteen. Then it should not be four. If it falls on B, if it falls on B, then it will be half. So if if it, 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 it if we back it uh, if we if we fall it in A it will be double right. No, it it cannot be double as because science said that it's not possible yeah, it, because it, yeah. But, but as per the logic, logic, it should be double. Yeah, yes. From this logic, it will be it should be double, right? So the question is wrong, I guess then. Um. Because we are not projecting on the same vector, right? We are projecting yeah, on A. Different vector, yes. Yeah. We are projecting on A, not on B. How oh, okay? How is the question wrong here? Um.
can you can you explain why it's uh, what will be the answer yeah as per you what is the answer ma'am uh, and the answer is four okay so what like if you solve it mathematically uh, ma'am what is the answer can you repeat it answer is four okay answer is four so okay we are projecting um Okay. So you have projection. So, so ma'am, basically you are going to calculate for the cos theta, and you are going to replace it in the next projection thing. I mean, by algebraically, are you going to yeah. do that? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then, then it would be half. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, but geometrically, ah, uh, okay. Geometrically, how it should look like. Okay, geometrically the uh, relevance of eight itself is not there, madam. At what point this B is projecting only ten, and you know the projection? Uh, if you take this as origin is five, uh, then you. What is that we are calculating? Length of projection of vector B. B onto A. Onto A. Yeah. That is a question, right? Oh. Your now you have to find what is the length of projection of this vector b. Like when you are projecting, so you are projecting first. Okay, your drawing is misleading. Uh, a is ten okay. means uh, it should be uh, I mean, uh, bigger than uh, this eight, madam. Okay, okay. So <laughs> let's say this is my a. Okay. This you can so, draw it smaller. Uh, let's say this smaller. is let okay fine. Let's yeah, say this is my eight, five okay. Five and then another three is eight. Let's say this is my eight yeah. unit okay. So uh, eight to five one ninety degree will come. Okay. Now yeah. you want to project this vector B onto A. Then it is uh, more like this, yeah ninety right? degree there. Yeah. yeah. We want to find uh, if you label it, uh, maybe C B. Okay. Okay. And this was ten. This is eight. So something like uh, similar squares, madam. Similar triangles. Yeah, I think you can take cos theta just from the figure, and you should be able to get four. So and cos theta would be five by ten, and the wow. projection would be b cos theta. So, uh, eight into five by ten means four. Five by h, which is one by two. Yeah. So now, if you take uh, now, you need this b, right? So, your again cos theta would be no, no, no. Sorry, not cos theta. Um. Uh, It would be B cos theta. Yeah. And what is B? Okay, yeah. B is B just is eight, eight, right? B is eight. Yeah. Okay. So B is eight. It's one by two. Just four. So this was a. This was a problem statement. So. Yeah, we didn't think like this actually. Yeah, it is yeah. like this method. Okay, but yeah, with linear algebra and matrices, uh, what is the how we are doing? Okay, so uh, okay, let's okay. see that way. So like, let's see using formula. So you want to project B onto A, right? And so this is given as what? This will be projection of B onto A. So this is. projection of b onto a right so b transpose a not b transpose a transpose right 
A transpose B by A transpose A times A. Correct. And what is the length of A? Five. A is ten. A is eight. B is ten. A is ten and B is eight, madam. No, production of B onto A. B is ten, right? Okay. A is eight. Okay. Um, and and what is this production given us? So this is P, right? So P is five unit. So five equal to. You have this A transpose B, and A transpose A will be a sixty four. Which is a square, so just sixty-four times what is the length of a eight? Okay, so from here we can get this a transpose b, right? So a transpose b should be forty, should be of length forty. Yeah, brother. Five eighths of forty. Okay, now what what happens if you project a onto b? So a onto b is given as what? This will be e onto b, right? So b transpose a by b transpose b into b into b. And this is what you have to find. So we know. So this is uh, you know this you know B. this you know this. B transpose B is. Uh, so you have forty by. Uh, um. Hundred, into ten. Ten, four. So we get four, right? Okay, ma'am. But I think this is uh, this is much easier to go with. If we can remember the trigonometry, then it is okay. Hmm. This was me. Ma'am, how is uh, uh, cos theta? Uh, you put five by ten, no? Uh, cos uh, theta. Cos theta is what? Is adjacent b by, h. b by h, right? So b is five, right? Ah yes. And h is this ten, right? Correct. So oh, this okay, is one okay. by adjacent. two. Adjacent. Okay, fine. Mm. Okay. Similarly, yeah. for you do for this. But actually, the see the five is actually it is uh, the length of uh, the projection, right? From length of a the projection. To the line which you have put from a to the a yeah. b vector, hmm. that length is five, or uh, this base length is five? No, no. This I mean when you are yes, projecting yes. this a onto b, so hmm. this is your p, right? Where it falls. Okay. Yeah, where okay, it falls. Fine, is, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will make a right angle triangle. Yeah. That actually, this vertical line from a to this uh, b vector is e, right? It is b minus. Yeah, 3. it is e. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks. Okay. Okay. When we're looking at the question. Let's see more. I'll just come back to it. Maybe I'll I'll skip these things. Or uh, you can easily solve these questions, right? I mean, the four fundamentals of spaces. You can find column space, row space, null space, null space of a transport, so on. The answer is given here. You can have a look at it in case uh, you have any doubt. Okay. What about this? 
So this was also in one of your quest question. How will you find the, the condition on? I think we have done a similar kind of question. Take okay. yeah. augmented matrix and uh, we will and reduce it. it. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. then yeah. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, can you solve it? Okay. Um. See, uh, you take the augmented matrix. So you have. You already have the solution. So you take the augmented matrix A, B, right? And then you perform the various uh, row operations. So what we did is uh, we R2 we replaced by R2 minus R1, R3 replaced by R3 plus R1. And then you get this matrix. Now you want to uh, make the pivots, right? So in the second column, uh, you don't have any pivot, so you go for the third column. So this is your number pivot, and you want to make this zero then, right? So for this, you need to we performed R three replaced by R three minus R two, right? And from there, we got something of this sort. Okay, you just try to uh, try to do this. Okay, you will get you will get a matrix which is which looks like this. Now, what does the question ask you? It asks, find the condition of B1, B2, B3, such that AX equal B has a solution. So when does this system will have a solution? When even this when B3 plus 2B1 minus B2 becomes zero. Is equal to zero. Yeah. yeah. So that, that should be the answer. So 2B1 minus B2 plus B3 equals zero. So third answer, third option should be right. And can you please show the solution for once? Yep. Ma'am, also, how can we say that uh, B3 plus 2B minus 1 minus B2 must be equals to 0? If it doesn't happen, then your system is inconsistent, right? Uh, Ma'am, uh, sorry, I forgot, but what is the condition for system to be consistent? I mean, when the solution exists. So see, if 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 this is not zero, if, if this is not zero, okay. So what you're basically saying is zero is equal to some non-zero value, which doesn't make sense. See, this was in B, right? What is what you are saying is zero is equal to some non-zero value, which is not possible. So even this should have this should be equal to zero. Okay, ma'am, I get it. Okay. All right. Let's see this question. So you have two matrices A and B, and you have to check which among the following statements are correct. So do you want to try this question? So the first option yes. is when X belongs to... Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, first option, ma'am, first option and third option, we can do it. I mean, we can prove it by normal algebra or something, okay. which is correct, actually. We can do it. But ma'am, mm -hmm. for the second option, how to approach that second option? I mean, how to try for the second okay. option. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, ma'am, uh, but can we go with the very first option? Yeah. yeah? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, fine. So the first option is X belongs to null space of A. And you want to check if X will also belongs to null space of, I'll just write null space of B. Okay. So when X belongs to null space of A, 
what does it mean it means that x equal 0 x equal 0 okay and you want to show x belongs to null space of ba right and see uh, you can always multiply both side by b right so now from here you can can you see that this ba comes out to be zero so if ba x equal to zero means what it means x should belong to the null space of ba or oh, yes ma'am yeah so the first option should be true now let's look at why the second option is true so your x belongs to column space of a okay so x belongs to column space of a means and it is given that a is also bc a equal bc so this is same as column space of bc okay so x belonging to column space of a means x belongs to column space of bc now it means b times c of x oh, sorry this is one other space right okay so when you say x belongs to the column space of a matrix then then you can easily write that a uh, th this means that a x equal b this is what you write yes ma'am hmm? so similarly in this case you can write since x uh, and uh, when you write a x equal to b and there what do you say there you say b belongs to column space of a right yes this is what you say this is what it means now what we are saying is x belongs to column space of a which is also same as x belongs to column space of b times c so you can write your x as some b times c times some vector y right youtube streaming is stuck oh i'm not sure about it oh. is the youtube streaming not happening that's okay so we can i can record from here also just give me a minute Okay, I have started the recording also, so we'll share that with you. All right. So, yeah. So we can write x to be b c times y, and this can also be written as b of c y. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, yeah. So we can write x to be b c times y, and this can also be written as b of c y. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. And we can just take c y to be. Let's say I can take it as that. So what we are saying is x equal b z, right? So and we wanted to prove that x belongs to column space of B. So if if we can write x to be b times now vector z, so it means x belongs to column space of B. Right? So even The second option is right. 
Now, what about the third option? Ma'am, as a tone get uh, that uh, you get tone get by x is equal to b into c into y. Um. Okay. Um. When you say b, um, uh, you have you have seen this. Uh, a x equal to b system of equation, right? And this uh, you you also saw that saying b belongs to a x equal to b means your b belongs to the column space of a. We have yes. seen it, right? Uh, yes. So now here, uh, we are saying x belongs to the column space of a. Okay. So I should be able to write x as a times some vector y. Let's compare these two. Uh, okay, okay, uh, right. Right. Uh, so here your b is x. Here your x y is x. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so now a is equal to b c. Uh, yes. Now yes. I can also write this as b times c y. Yes. Okay. So c y is again some just vector. I can write it as some vector z. Okay. okay. So I'm able to write x as b times z. Uh, yes, ma'am. So your x should belongs to column space of b. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, now the next uh, next option is x belongs to null space of a b implies b x belongs to null space of a. So x belongs to null space of a b means what? X equals zero. A b x equals zero. A into b x. Right. So from here you can see b x belongs to null space of a. So it's quite easy. So this is also true. But four, what about option four? Ma'am, it's false. Ah, oh, okay. So can you give me one example? Ma'am, algebraically we can prove, but I don't know about examples actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like whenever we say some, like when x belongs to null space of a b. It need not imply that x belongs to null space of b also. Okay. So let's see. Uh, let's just take one example for that. So our claim is uh, x belongs to null space of a b. X belongs to null space of a b implies x belongs to null space of b. So let's take a matrix A to be B one zero zero zero. Let's take your matrix B to be identity. Okay. So when you do A B. This is just going to be A, which is one zero zero zero, because you're multiplying A with just an identity matrix, so it just remains a matrix A. Now, x belong. What is the null space of A B? What is the null space of A B? Zero one. Zero one. Zero one. And what about what is the null space of B? Zero zero. Zero zero. Yeah. So you see that zero one belongs to the null space of A B, but zero one does not belong to null space of B. Right. So you have one example from where you can show. So option four is wrong. This is false. Ma'am, if you have to <clears throat> prove this algebraically, uh, 
how do you do it ma'am uh, like x belongs to null space of a b means implies a b x is equal to 0 uh, then you can't split it like you split the uh, option like you know like you did it in c right because um, a b cannot be equal to b a we can actually the orders are same they are square matrices n cross m but uh, then how do you prove it uh, in case if you don't know the example way See, you won't be able to prove it because this is not right i mean this option is i mean this is not no, right no, correct how do you disprove it uh, algebraically yes. because uh, science says okay. that it can be uh, uh, you know can be uh, disproved algebraically so Uh, how will you disprove algebraically or uh, maybe mm, true by contradiction maybe that is one way sayan so, can you please share how you did that i actually prove it algebraically i didn't disprove it for for disproving we need example yeah, we need example yeah for disproving we need examples we general, just cannot algebraically disprove something but you said you can prove it algebraically right but this is uh -huh. wrong no this is wrong option is wrong okay. so uh, no 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 what i said we can prove it that the option is wrong i that said that is you can I show the say... option is wrong algebraically correct hmm. ha 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 uh, exactly so that's exactly. what i'm asking ki how do you do it so if a is order of n cross n b is order of n cross n x we mm -hmm. know that x a x equal 0 or b is like n cross 1 so we can just change the order because the order doesn't change anything i mean it's not like they they are i mean a and b are square matrices so we can just change the order over there order of what i mean a and b they they are square matrices right they are not rectangular that means their columns has to be equal to rows i i'm not sure if that's the correct method uh no i don't think so <laughs> So, ma'am, in such cases, we we have to take an example and disprove it. Yeah, I mean, to dis uh, to to show something is not right. I mean, you need one example. Okay. So question four is uh, very straightforward. So just um, uh, the first option here is says row space is orthogonal to the null space. So we know that this is true. Uh, then second is row space is orthogonal to the null space of A transpose. So which is wrong. Then dimension of row space of a matrix is always equal to the dimension of column space of matrix. This also we know is. Uh, yes. uh nothing i'm sorry okay and similarly option d is wrong so this uh, this we have already seen right this we have already yes, seen sir. and proved it so these are the statements that are coming from the fundamental sum spaces okay yeah then again i had this question but uh, i am sure it's the same question it's the same well. question yeah so i'll just skip it what about this question mm -hmm. 
This is asking the discourse. Ah, uh, sorry. Will <coughs> somebody ask this in the discourse? Ma'am, we can find P one easily here, and P two we can find by uh, get the uh, plane uh, because mm -hmm. it's orthogonal to one two three. We can so directly. We can get the basis for for that, and we can uh, make matrix for that those. With that, those bases. Or we can, or we can directly go with like it's both are like orthogonal complements. Yeah. So it should give identity with x and determinant should give like from. Yeah, uh, the like very straightforward explanation for this. So see, uh, even can you this, can you explain that? Uh, even this vector is redundant. You don't even need that. Like if you look at the question, it says. Uh, P one is a projection matrix onto the line spanned by any vector. In in this case, the vector is given to be one, two, three. So let's say this is my vector A. Okay. So P one is a projection matrix onto this lines uh, onto the line spanned by this vector A. And now P two is the projection matrix that projects any vector onto the plane perpendicular to span of A. So, if you draw any plane perpendicular to A, okay, let's say I don't know how to draw it, but okay, let's say this. So, this is a plane which is perpendicular to A, and P two projects the vector onto this plane, right? So, we, uh, I mean, kind of we know that this P one, ah, uh, like range of P one or uh, Range of P one. If you take the direct sum of uh, this range of P two, this should give you complete R three, right? This we had uh, seen. I think this also we had seen earlier. How we will get R three? Can we? I think we can just. Think of the same way we did with the projection projection matrix. Like we are projecting onto the mm. column space, mm. so the pro, like the perpendicular one, it will be there, right? It should be in the air transpose in that case. So it should be like com, uh, column space is per, perpendicular to the left null space. space. So uh, left null space, yeah. So it should give the they are orthogonal complement, so it should give the whole like whole vector space. Yes. Same concept. Can you explain so, this? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, see, you 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 have seen that uh, this null space of uh, uh, any matrix is perpendicular to row space of a matrix, right? This you know. So, when you are projecting, let's say uh, uh, you are projecting this x. So, if you take p one, let's say p one of x. Okay. Uh, so this is on this line A itself, right? Yeah. The P one is it is on X itself. So this should be X. If you take like, uh, um, okay. When we are projecting x onto p one, right? With uh, with p one onto a, right? Mm. We are projecting, are projecting x, x onto a. Yeah. Using projection matrix p one, right? Yes. So it won't it won't be x, right? It will be a in a, right? Uh, it will be in a, but. It won't be x, I think. Uh, okay, oh, hold on. So what I'm trying to say is, how do I expect? Okay.
Oh man, we can do it with eigenvalues also, right? Like, along it will have eigenvalue one, perpendicular it will be zero that way. So. Uh, uh, like, um, like multiplication of eigenvalues would be equals to the de equals yeah, to the determinant. So oh, one plus zero, them. it would be like that. I have to add them, not multiply. Because it's one, one, mm. yeah, one will be P1 will have determinant one, the other one will have determinant zero. Okay, uh, um, all right. So when you um, see, when you talk about the range of this projection matrix so this you know this is or this is this is set of all the x for which px would be x if they are on the same plane then it's correct if they are on the same plane yeah and when you talk about the null space of P, how, how will it look like? It will be Px equal zero. Yeah, it will be Px equal to zero. Right. Um, uh, so your P1, um, what is your P1 doing? It is projecting uh, on this line, right? You're projecting on this line. And then P2 is, uh, P2 is projecting on the plane which is perpendicular to the same. So when you add this P1 and P2, you are getting the whole space R3, right? For example, we can take it as this A as the x-axis and this plane as a zy plane. Plane so, as zy plane, yes. And A as x-axis. So x, y, z, it will be R3. Huh. That also you can think of it. So any vector you take in R3, it, you it should be, be able to write. Yeah. It will be a part of R3, right? No, no, so no, I mean, uh, I mean, it will make the whole space R3, right? I'm not, I cannot be because sure. it is, I mean, uh, because it is pan of A, is it so man? Huh. Yeah. Because P2 is the projection matrix that projects vectors onto the plane so, perpendicular to span of A. So you can think, yeah, you can think of it as x-axis and this is yz plane, let's say. Uh, so any vector you take in R3, you will be, you should be able to write as a linear combination of uh, uh, these two, uh, as an addition of these two. So what we are saying is, if I take any vector x in R3, uh, like these two subspaces will constitute the whole uh, using this these two subspaces you should be able to get the whole r3 so you you will be able to write x to be some vector which is in p1 which is in p1 so let's say some x1 and uh, plus some plus some x2 which is in uh, this P2. Yeah. 
and the answer madam actually final answer is final only one only because p1 plus p2 is just identity identity matrix um uh, ma'am i actually understood till the part that when you uh, consider i mean both both of the uh, projected matrices together you can actually reach the entire r tree but how is it actually related to the determinant of p1 plus p2 okay uh, so okay so till there it's fine and uh, now what i'm saying is uh, so x belongs to Uh, let's take any vector in R three, okay? So you should be able to write this vector as, uh, as a sum of, uh, take something in, uh, P one and something in P two. Yeah. So half of this uh, okay. P one plus P two will be one zero 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 one zero 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 one something like that, madam. So here x belongs to the range of, x one belongs to range of. Uh, P one, so basically row of. Okay. And X two belongs to range of P two. Okay. So. X one, uh, see there. So you can write X one. As P one X one. And X two as. P two X two. What will happen? Uh, okay, what will happen if you perform the projection matrix P two? Um, on X. So this will be just P two. X one plus X two. I have taken it from here. Okay, so this P two X one plus P two X two, right? But P two X one should be zero. Yeah. 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 So what we got is is P two X. Is P two X two, and similarly, if I uh, perform the projection matrix P one on some X, I should be able to get P one X one. Now, if I put it it back there, I should be able to get P one X plus P two X. So you get. P one plus P two times X. So what we got is we got X to be P one plus P two of X. So uh, from here, can you see that this should be identity? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if this is identity, the determinant should be one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Maybe some more uh, geometrical view is needed here. So maybe I'm not able to interpret it properly here. I think, I think the eigenvalue one is more easier to understand. Eigenvalue one? Uh, if P one is projecting onto it, it will have an eigenvalue one. Hmm. And if it onto Hmm. Uh, it will have an eigenvalue zero, hmm. so P one will have determinant one, and P two will have determinant zero. So yeah, hmm. yeah, 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 right. Yeah, that is better to visualize. Right? Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, here you write x is equal to x one plus x two. Can you explain this? Uh, no. Um, I I am writing it from here. So this is like if if I'm taking any vector in R three, um, 
I should be able to write as x one and x two, where x one belongs to, or p one and x two belongs to, I mean, range of p one and range of p two. So from there we are writing it. Uh, it's just because of uh, both our uh, bases are independent, and then we will uh, like take some uh, combination of that, and we will uh, it will spin up entire R three. Um. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. I I think I had discussed the uh, direct sum. Uh, maybe not in more detail. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Just go with the eigenvalue method. I think that's better. The what I did is little more lengthy and yes, ma'am. This one is easy eigenvalue, but ma'am, yeah, there is another method understand. which we can. I mean, uh, what I have done is I have derived it uh, by using the formulas. You know, uh, for I just wanted to ask whether it is the correct way or not. Like okay. for P one, I I went with that uh, like taking out the matrix uh, projection matrix like what we mm -hmm. do a into a transpose upon a transpose upon a. We get mm -hmm. the matrix P one then projection matrix P one and for P two okay. I have taken out the basis for um, the plane x plus two y plus three y three z and then I got the two uh, two vectors and then okay. I use the formula uh, that um, uh, what is it a projection trans matrix. yeah projection matrix yes but, uh -huh. for uh, multi dimensional that I used and then I got P two and then when I okay. add it add up then I got the identity matrix. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So that is can, also. Yeah. Yeah. Then you'll have to do yeah. a little calculation. Yes, yeah. ma'am. But I find hmm. it easy. But this again, value yeah. one is more. I mean, it's easier. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. This was also your previous year quiz question. Uh, previous term. Yeah. Last term. Ha, last term. Okay, here we have already given the solution. Okay. Oh, uh, so okay. These are the points that are given to you, right? So you have the first point as. One comma two. Uh, the second point as second point is two comma one. C is three comma three. D is four comma four. E is five comma four. Right. And you have to uh, solve for. You have to find the least le square. Uh, using the least square method, you have to find the best fit line. Right. Uh, so, uh, can you solve this question? The answer is already given here. What? Madam, the same question was already uh, done As, in one yeah. of the live sessions. Huh. So okay, we can. The solution is already here, so maybe you can just try it out. I'll go back to the week four topics. Okay. So uh, again, in regression, we are trying to find the best fit line given, uh, like given the set of data points, you want to find the best fit line, right? So this this was our goal, and uh, to do so, uh, uh, the predicted y that we got is that looks something like. Okay. 
so given any new data point x1 x1 x2 up to xn right uh your y predicted will be something of the form theta not plus theta 1 x1 this was i think theta 1 x1 up to theta in xn and you want to find this these uh, you you want to find these thetas so this this was your goal so you want to find such theta which best fit so when you when we say best fit i mean you want such line on which uh, you want such thetas which reduces the error that you get right so your goal was to reduce uh, redu uh, to reduce the error and and it's the same uh, the answer that you get the solution that you get for that is same as this a transpose a exact equal a transpose b this is the same solution that we got from projection e square and the same exact that you will get so for this yeah, the, for this you get the least error right so it's the same one which we got for the previous uh, least square method and projection i will not go to the proof because all has been already done before so Let's do from eigen values, eigen vectors. Yes. Okay, so what are these eigen values and eigen vectors uh, uh, giving you? Right? So this lambda, this this expression that you see, a x equal lambda x. So this lambda is just a scaling factor. Like how much, uh, like when you are performing this matrix on a vector, how much it is scaling or how much it is uh, shrinking your vector. So this scaling parameter, like, uh, is given by this lambda, okay. and this uh, th this lambda is called the. Uh, this is also this is what we are calling as factor of compression or extension in the eigenvalue. So how do you solve for x equal lambda x? So, given any matrix, when you uh, when you have to uh, like solve for uh, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so how do you proceed with it? Characteristic equation solved. Yeah. So. A minus lambda I, determinant of A minus lambda is equal to zero. Find lambda. Yeah. So basically, you are trying to solve this ax equal lambda x. So this ax minus lambda x is zero. Right? So this is nothing but a minus lambda i x to be zero. So this x should be null space of a minus lambda i, right? Yes. So for solving this, you need you need the uh, okay. You want the determinant of a minus lambda i to be zero, and this is also called the characteristic equation. 
So you solve for this character characteristic equation and you get your lambda and and then just uh, solve for this uh, lambda, right? Solving for this lambda, you get uh, your eigenvectors. Let's just solve one, maybe one small question over here. Uh, what are the eigenvalues? Can you find the eigenvalues for A? Can you solve for the eigenvalue and eigenvector for this question? It's 2 and minus 1. Um, uh, 2 and? Minus 1. 2 and minus 1. OK. And what about the eigenvector? Uh, Ma'am, it's 5 by 2, 1 and 1, 1, two eigenvectors. Okay. Uh, 5 by 2. 5 by 2, comma 1 and 1, comma 1, two eigenvectors. Okay. I think that is right. Yeah. All right, so there should be no doubt in solving for eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? I mean, you given any matrix, you should be able to solve it. Ma'am, can I ask something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ma'am, if uh, I have a matrix n cross n, mm -hmm. uh, or so, suppose 3 cross 3, so it, is it necessary to have 3 eigenvalue? For this matrix. Is it necessary to have three mm -hmm. eigenvalues? Uh, yeah, so when you're asking three eigenvalues, you mean three distinct? Uh, yeah, it will, will it have distinct eigenvalues? 
Eight need not be right. I mean, some may be repeated. So if it I is mean, repeated, then how we will say like if suppose uh, we have two repeated again value like mm -hmm. uh, that's one, a zero zero. Uh, zero zero one. two yeah one yeah. So we will say three again values yeah or two again values. Uh, I mean we'll say it as uh, I mean it is. Uh, there are three eigenvalues, but two of the eigenvalues are same. Okay, but uh, if it is same, then but we will get distinct eigenvectors for that, right? Not always. When you get distinct eigenvectors, then. Uh, It's like zero has arithmetic progression too. Yeah. That's an arithmetic multiplicity, like AMG. Yeah, that arithmetic, we have. arithmetic multiplicity. Yeah. I can get. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I don't know if I have some example on that. Oh. Okay. Oh, hold on. You can take identity matrix and it will have one. Ah, right, right. Uh, that's the best example, right? So identity matrix has all the uh, like. Uh, what are the eigenvalues for that? Huh? It's so one, 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 right? Yeah, one, one, one. And what are the eigenvectors? One zero 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 one zero zero. Yeah, so even those eigenvalues are all same, but you you get diff distinct eigenvectors, right? So that's a very simple example for this. Uh, that's what I'm asking. And mm -hmm. here, but uh, in identity matrix, uh, we find lambda is equal to one, but we said it has three eigenvalues one one one. So that was my question. We will say like. If I'm getting one eigenvalue for uh, a matrix, mm -hmm. and the matrix is three cross three, then I would uh, I should say it has uh, same eigenvalues. And if you can say it has one eigenvalue with arithmetic multiplicity three, then in solve it will be like in the third order, right? Uh, 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 sorry. When we solve it, it will be on the third order, right? When we try to find the, so we can mm, see. Yeah, yeah. And like, can we get? Can we have less eigen vector than the number of eigen values? Can we have less eigen vectors? Like we, I have three eigen values, and can I get for uh, two eigen vector for that? Like same. Okay. Um, no, like when you say you have, uh, okay, when you are saying you have, let's say, three eigenvalues, so are you talking about distinct or it also counts repeated? Either case is like if, if, it, um, if it is distinct, it should be three eigenvectors. Okay, but yeah. if it is same, then it's not necessary. So. Not necessary, yeah. I don't think I have a question for that right now. I'm sure um, it's a triangular matrix. matrix. It's a triangular matrix. You can take an example of triangular matrix, like two one. Yeah. Two, Yeah, so the example that she gave just now, so let's try it. So, yeah. this is what you gave, right? Um, 
Yeah, no? triangular matrix. Yes. We can also take mm -hmm. uh, this. Okay, let's let's take this. What about this matrix? Or what are the eigenvalues? Two and one. Two one, one and zero. zero. Two one zero. Yes. Yeah. And eigenvectors. For this matrix, we will have uh, three eigenvalues. Uh, you will have three, no? Uh, the one sitting on the diagonal. So what will you get when you solve for this matrix? Mm, one zero 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 one zero. One zero zero. Zero one zero. Zero one zero. Yeah. Yeah, just two. Just two, right? So here, here you have an example where you have three eigenvalues but two eigenvectors ma'am for lambda equal zero we still can calculate right for lambda equal zero uh, we still can calculate which would be the null space of matrix a we still can calculate which would be zero zero one it come in? Um, zero zero one I mean, you see, ah, zero, 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 one. Zero, zero, I mean, one, zero, zero, ah, one. Zero, yeah. zero, one, right? Zero, zero, one, so yeah. That would be another, uh, I mean, another yeah, yeah, right, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, and how about, ma'am? I'm, I, I will tell you one matrix, like hmm. three, one. Uh, you write it in row, three, one. Okay. Okay, I'll write it here. Three, one. Zero, three. Zero, For, three. Yes. Okay. No, in no, row, no, second row. Second row, okay. that's another. Okay, case. okay. For this, we have eigenvalue like one, and, sorry, three and three, two. Hmm. And eigenvector, we will have one. Because yeah. we have arithmetic multiplicity of two, right? And we have to check other cases over here as well. So only one. Right. Yeah, so yeah, the previous example, yeah, that was not right. So So here it is, yeah. So ma'am, we cannot generalize this thing like uh, all triangular matrices have this kind of property, right? We cannot generalize it. Uh, generalize in? Like uh, it will have, um, like, like if say it is uh, three cross three matrix, then we cannot generalize like for all triangular matrices, it will have less eigenvectors compared to the number of eigenvalues. We cannot generalize like this, right? It's not true for all the cases, right? Oh. Um. I'm not really sure. I, I no, don't, because just now we saw I don't think so. example, right? Uh, so, yeah. So we cannot we generalize, cannot generalize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw two in the, 
in the previous matrix like you wrote uh, 200 010 and uh, 000 there you have three distinct eigen values no uh, can you find, uh, find out uh, the eigen values for that because i got only two as eigen because 2 minus lambda and 1 minus lambda we will multiply we will find determinant then we will get zero only it's 2 minus lambda 1 minus lambda and minus lambda this you will get no Okay, so okay. then what happens? Two minus lambda, one minus lambda okay, minus right. lambda. Okay. So you get lambda to be zero one two. And okay. and we also know this that eigen value eigen vectors corresponding to distinct eigen values. Okay. Yeah. So uh, next we had uh, diagonalization. So when we say any matrix A is diagonalizable, if you can find an invertible matrix uh, S, right? If 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 there exists an invertible matrix like S, such that you can write A as S D S inverse. Right? So whenever you can find such an invertible matrix S. Uh, and then you can uh, then you can write a s s d s inverse so this d uh, this d that is written over here this is nothing but diagonal matrix so how do we uh, like uh, how how do we find this uh, thing how do we find this diagonal matrix oh, it's eigen value matrix right this is eigen value matrix yeah and what is this S? So this S is nothing but you find the eigenvalues for A. And corresponding to those eigenvalues, you find the eigenvectors. Right? And those eigenvectors, you put it in that matrix S. And this whole thing, this uh, S, D, S inverse, will give you A. Yeah, I'm sure you, you would have seen the proof also for this. Right. So like when you have to find, uh, let's say uh, there was also a question on. See, uh, we are able to, uh, since we are saying A is diagonalizable and we are able to write S A as S D S inverse. Right. So if we have to find let's say a to the power 2 then what happens this is just s d s inverse s d s inverse and this becomes just s d square s inverse right and finding d square is much easier than finding a square i mean uh, when it is when it when it is a small matrix then maybe in that case uh Maybe finding a square is easier, but as you increase the dimension, keep on increasing the dimension, uh, it, it will eventually become, uh, I mean, as you keep on increasing the power, sorry. A square maybe is easier to evaluate, but as you keep on increasing the power, it becomes more and more difficult. But when you have to evaluate d square, it is much easier, right? Because in these, d, d how, how, let's say if it is two cross two matrix, it will be, Lambda 1, lambda 2 sitting over here on the diagonal, and this is what you have. Then you when you square it, it just your diagonal entries get uh, you get the power on diagonal entries, and that's much easier to calculate. Right? So this is one benefit of using the diagonalization also, and you've also seen the Fibonacci uh, sequence for as as one application for this diagonalization. So yeah, so whenever you have to find a power of some matrix, uh, and if you know the matrix is diagonalizable, then it's much easier to do it, right? So on the same line, I have, okay, I have one question. Okay, 
you have a matrix given to be here which is uh, 3 5 minus 2 minus 4 so how do you find the trace of a to the power 10 How will you do it? So, ma'am, we can do. I mean, we can find the eigenvalues. We can create the matrix, and then we can just calculate for that uh, diagonal matrix. I mean, raised to ten, and then we can just add those two entries. Okay. So, um, your a to the power ten. This should be what? This would be p. D to the power ten, p inverse, right? What are the eigen values that you get? Minus two. One and minus two. One and minus two. Okay. Did you also find the eigen vectors? You don't. You don't have to find eigen vectors. Oh, sorry. We don't have to find eigen vectors here, right? Yeah. Uh, why is that? Because they are similar matrices, so we can trace will be same. So we can just trace the uh, values of yeah. one raised to ten and minus two raised so, to. So yeah. So okay. What is the answer? What is the final answer that you get? Thousand twenty-five. Ten. Ah, two to the power ten, I think, is one zero two four. It comes, yeah, I guess. Yeah, this one. Yeah, and one to the power ten is again one, so you just get one zero two. But uh, a to the power ten will not equal to d to the power ten, right? It it they are they will be similar, right? One pick up. Yeah. Similar matrices yeah, have same determinants. Same same. Same eigen value. Of course, the answer is two, but of course. Ah, but there it was all the entries, no? Hmm. There you are talking about all the entries, but here you are talking about the trace, right? Trace, trace. So trace. Trace is, of paper. Trace is what? Trace is the sum of eigenvalues. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So Correct. on the in like in the diagonal matrix, you will already have uh, your you already found your uh, eigenvalues, right? Trace for similar matrix are same. Are equal, correct, Kamal? Huh? Ha, yeah. Yeah, but the matrix will not be equal. Trace will be equal, but I'm saying the matrix will not be equal, right? Ah, uh, matrix will not be. Equal. Yeah, because I uh, share. I posted a question uh, on this course, and you replied there. Ah, uh, there, there, you were talking about. Uh... Some of all the entries of a matrix. Oh, yeah. That was the question. So the answer was wrong on that question. Ah, uh -huh. the answer. The answer was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, that was all the questions that I have for today. Ma'am, um, there was a question on the more second order approximation of a multivariate. Can we get questions like that in the exam? Um. Okay. Let me see. Uh, that has been covered in the class. Sure. Yeah. In week two, it is there, right? Yeah. I think the last lecture it has been done. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, even the formula, like how do you do it, has been given to you. But not for I think not for multivariate. But it was for function. single variable. Yeah. It was single variable. It was like f of x equals sine square x. It was given yeah, at pi by four. We calculated. The lecture it wasn't for x comma y. Just mentions, just mentions yeah. that you can do the same for multivariate using his same matrix. That's it. Just mentions it and. Yeah, there's no a formula that is given yeah. there or no explanation. Oh, uh, I am sure the formula was given, right? So, uh, for the 
like when you do it for one variable so uh, how what does it come as it come as uh, f of a f of a plus dash of a f of a plus f dash of x minus a x minus yeah x minus a plus f double dash of a f double dash of a x minus a whole x minus a the whole square divided by 2 factorial right yeah. this is what we do now uh, now if you extend it to uh the two variable so this is what this is f of x not comma y not plus fx add x this minus. x not comma y not x minus x not right plus F4. you have fy x y not y comma y not y minus y not till here it's same as the linear approximation this you have already seen linear approximation you have seen yeah yes right and in quadratic then what happens again you will have to uh, add this somehow i mean you will have to bring this term yeah right so it will be 1 by 2 factorial now you have double derivative right so in place of double derivatives uh, so f dash is what f dash is uh, gradient in second uh, variable right so f double dash will be gradient square of f right so gradient square of f is what gradient square of f is just fxx fyy fxy fy so ma'am basically it would be a like hessian. a plus b whole square kind hessian. of scenario ha uh -huh, hessian right right sorry hessian hessian matrix kind of scenario ah so this hessian matrix and then you want x minus a whole square right but you have two variable you have uh, x and y so this this will become your xy and this is xy right to factor it as two and we can do this like i'm asking can we get questions like this like so that i don't know <laughs> uh just hold on i think the slides are uh, are you sure the slides it is not there no ma'am it's not there is it cover in it the lecture is, video ah uh, it is uh, yeah if you look at last slide the last slide of uh, week 2 lecture 2.6 maybe i'll show you this Yes, ma'am. At thirty-two minutes, timestamp. It is there, no? Yeah, thirty-two minutes. Yeah, I think in the assignments and all, you have not seen the problems on this, but lecture it has been given. Yeah, so it's the same thing. What you, uh, what you do for one dimension, uh, like uh, in one dimension, the way you do the quadratic approximation. uh the same way you have to do it in now two dimension in lecture i had to do this for one variable 
lecture 2.6 i guess lecture 2.6 you have to go mm -hmm. at the end uh, yes but is uh, in one variable no no it doesn't do variable can you see this so this is uh, 2.6 you go to higher order approximation. So there it has been given to you. There. So whatever I just uh, told you, like the same formula, just try solving that. I think you should be able to get the answer. Has anyone tried that question? Ma'am, I actually tried. I got some signs wrong. But the okay. terms I was getting, the terms I was getting very close. So I chose the option and submitted. So I got it correct. Okay. But the signs are off. Yeah. Okay. Can you solve it possible? Uh, can I? What? Can you solve that question if possible? Solve that question. Okay. The mock, uh, like tomorrow, will be discussed. Okay, can you give me the function? What was the function? Square y. X square y. X square y. Around 1, 1. And what we saw, fx, y, s. Uh, fx not, fx, uh, x not, y not, x minus x not so on right uh, so the first thing is you need to know what is the fx so this is what this is 2xy what is fy this is x square now what is fx at 1 1 because you will need it right fx at x not y not this is 2 Fy at 1, 1 is 1. Okay. What else do you need? You need this Hessian matrix. Let's do it. So this Hessian matrix is Fxx, Fxy, Fyx, Fyy. Right. So what is Fxx? This is 2y. What is Fxy? It is 2x. What is fyy? Again, 2x. Fyy is 0. Right? Now, what are these values at uh, 1, 1? 1? Two, 2, 2, 0. 2, 0. Now, just substitute it here. So, fxy, which is fx not y not. So, fx not y not is just 1 plus fx 1, 1, 2, x minus 1 plus 1, y minus 1 plus xy 2, 2, 2, 0 xy right divided by 2 you have so this all this can get cancelled out and you'll just have one 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 here 
okay so this is 1 plus 2x plus y minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 plus what do you get x plus y x you solve this what do you get this is x square plus xy plus yx right So overall, what do you get? It is uh, x square plus 2xy plus 2x plus y minus 2. This is what I'm getting. Yeah, that's the correct answer. Is the answer? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, you already know how to do the linear approximation. To extend it to quadratic, you just need to add this term. That's all. Okay. All right, then. So we'll close the session for today and uh, I'll just revise all the topics uh, like go through all the lectures and uh, try to solve uh, some problems that will be more useful. And you said there is a session tomorrow. Like, There's a TA session tomorrow. There's a session tomorrow. Yeah. Will it be a TA session? Or? It is a TA session. Yeah. Okay. So there the mock will be discussed. Okay. Yeah, just solve the problems that that's all I would say for now. Because topics you would already know, right? So solving more problems at this point seems to be a better idea. Ma'am, can you please scroll down? Uh, scroll down, yeah. Madam, compared to previous years, uh, previous term question papers, so what do you feel, madam, is it easier or tougher this term? How oh, I don't know that. <laughs> Just give some. I hints, think madam. previous. I think previous year was a little tougher. I guess. But I'm sure if you know the concepts or everything that is covered in the lecture, you should be able to do it. Okay, then. Uh, all the best for your exams. Ma'am, where will you upload this uh, under the supplementary content? Supplementary content, yes. Under the